Hey guys, and welcome back to the Two Players Podcast, episode 11. The news this time around is not going to be as lengthy, but we are going to talk about games we've been playing, some other things that we have maybe watched or seen over the past couple of weeks that we haven't talked about, and then we're going to get into a host topic. Uh, I'm not sure what mine is yet, but I'll figure it out later in the show. So the first news topic we have is Mighty No. 9. It finally released, and I'm pretty sure everyone knows that it has been panned across the board as being an average game. And supposedly, some of the codes are broken. Yeah, that's like, just... Like, come yeah, on. it's really bad. So, like, you back, you back this project, and then three years later, you get it, and then the code doesn't even work. Yeah, like, this like is just that. so much disappointment everywhere. Yeah, Mighty Number no. 9 is... Uh, I pre-ordered it like those three years ago, and then I, I didn't get it when it came out. And then I emailed GameStop. I was like, "Yo, uh, where's my pre-order?" And then they canceled it. I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Like I, I, I actually wanted to play it, but since they canceled it, I'm like, "Well, I guess I'll wait for like it to go on sale or something." I don't know. I'll wait. Yeah, I mean, just with all the bad like reviews, the game just being mediocre at best. This is just like the final like kick to the balls right here. It's just like, like <laughs> come on, man, you can at least give them the game. <laughs> like, well, it's better than nothing. Right? Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, th this the whole Met in my number nine thing is just it's just a mess. Yeah, it, it's like how how do you make a okay Mega Man game, but you made Mega Man for how many years, like? what yeah and you you exceeded your goal like exponentially and then you delayed the game multiple times you know and then it just turns out being garbage you know it's like so bad and disappointing i mean i i wasn't as hyped as a lot of other people were so i'm glad for that so hopefully that whatever um happens in the future from my number nine uh, I don't know. I don't know if they'll even make a sequel. That I that probably won't even. It happen. probably won't happen at this point. I don't even know what uh, Inafune is gonna do at this point. I'm pretty with all the sure it's dead at this point. Like. Cause I know I know he's making another game called Record. With that game looks pretty fun, but um, I actually didn't know Inafune was part of it. So let's see what happens with that. But he took way too many projects at once with Red Ash, this game, Record. It was just uh, he was just doing too much, and it just and everything ended up being bad. So. But let's just uh, see. I feel like Red Ash was just him trying to grab more money. I was like, wait, if you wanted to make that game, you should have finished Mighty Number no. 9 and then announced Red Ash, and then people would have been more on board because that did not even succeed in the Kickstarter because he just thought, hey, you know, people wanted a new, another Mega Man. You want to buy another Mega Man Legends kind of game? Yeah. And then that didn't work. So, yeah, like his true colors kind of showed when he did that Red Ash campaign, and I was like, uh, that's a bit shady, you know? <laughs> Because you made so much money from Mighty Number no. Nine, you can't be using all that money for it. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, you could have at least used some of it for Red Ash or something like that, but whatever. I right, think he, he wants to make like an anime and stuff for Mighty Number no. Nine oh too. Oh my god. He, yeah. He's pretty much screwed for the rest of his life at this point when it comes to making video games. I think. Yeah. No one's gonna want his name on anything anymore. He, one chance. He had one last chance, and he just screwed it all up. Yeah. But yeah, you know. What can you do? He made his own decision, so... Uh, the next piece of news is the next Sonic game is actually scheduled for next year. Uh, there's actually some news going to be announced on July 22nd, which is 21 days from now. I hope that it's not Sonic Generations 2, despite me loving Sonic Generations 1. I hope it's just not a, another Generations game, because that, that would just be way too easy, I think. Um, but, I think Sonic needs a formula. But like I, I I do think they should stick with the whole unleash thing with the boost stuff because I do find that gameplay yeah. fun. But yeah, I think a generations would be too easy to make, and they they know that would appeal to a lot of people. But I don't know, it seems kind of like lazy, I guess. It's not coming up yeah. with like a brand new idea and stuff. My ideal Sonic game for this new one that's gonna come out, I want it to be the modern style formula with the Sonic Unleashed kind of gameplay. Um, I want it to have um, just just that gameplay, no Werehog, no, I mean like, you could put the Wisp in there, but don't be as gimmicky as you were in Lost Worlds, yeah. just from like what I saw and heard, 
but you know just have like a Sonic game just with the modern Sonic style have good level design good music and bam we're good yeah just focus I mean, like, on Sonic man like obviously the writing needs to be good but you know the story doesn't have to be something like you know like over the top like you know a, a freaking chaos 2.0 or something stupid you know like, <laughs> it could be a simple story like what they've been doing for the past couple of years and I'll be fine with that you know but if they do a generations 2 I'm just hoping that it's better than the first one and not feel like a DLC pack for the first game, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so. I just I just want, you know, a Sonic game, but I don't I don't care. Yeah, but it, it's it's been a long time since we got gen a, a a good Sonic game cuz Generations came out 5 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a long time. And you know, it's weird that they haven't released the game this year. I guess they're actually taking their time with it. So, it'll launch next year. Hopefully it's good, but obviously we don't know anything until July 22nd at Comic Con at the 25th anniversary party. But you know, only only time will tell. Only people at Sonic Team know what they're doing right now. I mean, I'm excited for the new Sonic Boom game. I mean, that that that's, that's going to be game of the year. <laughs> Sonic Boom Fire and Ice. Oh, I mean, I, I'm I'm probably still going to buy to see exactly what sins our games did improve from the first game because the first game. It was good, but there was a lot of backtracking, like unnecessary backtracking. Like you had to go and get a certain amount of like collectibles to like advance, and I'm like, that's not Sonic. That's like Metroid and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it was more of a Metroidvania. Yeah. We don't we don't need that kind of gameplay in a Sonic. Yeah, game, that doesn't so. fit with Sonic. So yeah. Yeah, it it definitely took me off guard, and I almost wanted to go and you know put the game down, but I was like, I need to make this video, you know. So that's what that's what pushed me through it. All right. All right, so we got uh, seven new Pokemon. Yeah, new Pokemon. Yeah, seven new Pokemon. Pokemon. I think it was today, right? Wasn't it just like today? Oh no, yesterday. Sorry. It was just today. But that was the ja yeah Japanese um, trailer came out before the American one. So we got seven new Pokemon. Uh, I I cannot pronounce their names. I so we got a Pikachu clone, right? Uh, to <laughs> to was this to Tog Togo de Maru? I think it is. Togo de Maru. It's a okay. Steel Electric type. Um. So yeah, it's a bad, the, the Pikachu clone. D Dram Drampa. It's it's a normal dragon type with a with a pretty cool ability called Berserker, which uh, allows it the to droopy dragon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it actually looks pretty cool. I like its design. But uh, when it falls below half HP, it gains a special attack. So that's pretty cool. That's a new ability. Um, Charge a bug, which is the evolution of Grubba Bug or whatever it was called. And then it I saw a picture two. that um. This thing looks like a iPhone charger plug. <laughs> yeah, it look, it looks like a battery or inst yeah. It's, it, I like its design. I like most of these Pokemon's designs. They look very uh, exotic because you know Hawaii and stuff. Um, Hawaii. So then it evolves into a uh, Vika Volt or whatever, which is pretty interesting because it's a bug uh, electric Vika type. Vika Volt. Yeah, Vika Volt. I think it's called. Um, and it has Levitate, so that means it, it's immune to like ground attacks, which is pretty good because it covers that weakness. So I hope that thing is good because I like to use that thing. Uh, yeah, Tupa it looks pretty cool. Tupa Kako or whatever his name is, Coco, whatever. That, that seems Coco. to be like a, a legendary. I think I think that might be a legendary, since uh, it looks pretty important <laughs> and it has um, some pretty OP moves. I think like um, I think one of its moves uh, like brings your Pokemon to half HP no matter what. Like it doesn't what matter. What the hell? Yeah, so I'm like, all right, calm down there. And I think it was like some fish thing also. Uh, yeah, there it is. What is it called? B Braxish, Braxis. <laughs> And it has a pretty uh, uh, cool Braxish? ability too. Yeah, it's a water psychic. Oh, oh loud. His lips. <laughs> loud. Okay. Um, it has a, a pretty cool ability called dazzling, which allows, um, which doesn't allow Pokemon to use priority moves. So stuff like quick attack and uh, extreme speed are not like you, know, you can't use it against it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's going to be pretty big in uh, competitive Pokemon. Oh, and Cutie Fly, but no one gives a shit about that. <laughs> this is it's a bug like fairy a type. Bug, looks pretty yeah. bad. <laughs> So yeah, I, you know, seven new Pokemon, that's exciting. Yeah, I think seven they all look really cool. I really like all their designs a lot. I'm just hoping that this isn't all of them, because, you know, Gen <laughs> 6, was it X and Y, right? Yeah. Didn't even exceed 100 new Pokemon. Oh yeah, X and Y was just... Like a new generation. Yeah. I, I hope that doesn't become a new standard. So hopefully that there's more Pokemon that they still haven't announced, and we'll see them in the game for the first time. But, you know, if, if it's less than 100 new Pokemon for a new region, I hope that they all just look good and they do good things in the game, you know? Like, they have good moves and all this other stuff. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like uh, all the designs of the new Pokemon so far, so uh, it looks yeah, better than... They don't look that bad. Yeah, they, they look pretty cool. I, I do like them a lot. But we just gotta okay. see. 
<laughs> yeah, we just yeah we see for the game to come out and see exactly how good these new Pokemon are. The next piece of news is that Batman Return to Arkham has delayed it has been delayed indefinitely, so we don't have a release date now for it. I rip. So <laughs> the original release date was the 26th of July, which was 25 days from now. From now, and I guess they saw a bunch of complaints, people being like, "This is not a HD or like a remaster or whatever you want to call it." Because it honestly did look worse than the originals, so WB, I guess, was like, "I, we gotta fix this because it looks like garbage, basically." So they're gonna fix it up. Hopefully, it'll look better next time we see it. But yeah, now it's delayed indefinitely. Uh, I hope we see it by the end of the year, but we don't know yet. Yeah, I mean WB hasn't been that great with all the stuff recently. Like uh, the PC port of um, what was it? Arkham what? Uh, Arkham Knight. Arkham yeah. Knight and uh, Injustice, I think. Also, I think it was no, no, not Injustice. It was something else. I forgot. But um, yeah, they haven't been that good with like these whole technical problems and stuff right now. Reporting this stuff over, I don't know why. They just they're not that great with it right now. So yeah. I think it is good that's getting uh, uh, delayed, for, for, like you know, until they can fix their crap. I mean, hopefully it's a good delay. Yeah, hopefully it hasn't just been canceled, but, uh, you know, I think it would be better for the for it to look, you know, nice. I mean, why would you buy a remaster if it's not going to look, you know, better than what you have already? Yeah. Uh, the only other reason I would see is if, you know, they haven't played the games yet, but I think that if people, or if WB wants this to sell really well, they're going to have to make it look nice and pretty and... Make it good for basically the fans that love Batman, the Arkham series. So hopefully next time we see it, it'll look a lot better than what we saw the first time around. Yeah. All right, so we got Spider-Man Homecoming news. Donald Glover joins the cast. I don't know who this guy is. So I, I don't know. Uh, he is Childish Gambino, the rapper. Oh, all right. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, originally, when after the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Spider-Man movies, there was a lot of people being like, yo, uh, we want Donald Glover as the new Spider-Man, you know, like Miles Morales, and obviously that didn't go through, but, you know, now that he is in this game, or this movie, I should say, uh, people are still wondering what his role is. Is he going to be Miles Morales? Is Miles Morales and, and Peter Parker going to be in the same world? We still don't know. He could be a side character. He could just be a cameo. We don't know. But he is cast for the movie along with a bunch of other actors that I don't really know who they are. But uh, if he is um, Miles Morales, that would be cool. But I would, I would question how they would fill him in to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't. I mean, like personally, I don't think that he is Miles Morales because that would be like a huge contract and like a big thing. That, they, that I think Marvel and Sony would want to do with them. Yeah, I feel like Miles Morales should be its own thing and not like, you know, forced in with uh, Peter Parker and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they don't shove in too many things like they did in with the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Yeah, yeah I just want Spider-Man Homecoming to just be a focused movie and not worry too much about setting everything up at one movie. I mean, you can set up one thing, but don't set up the whole freaking universe in one movie. Yeah. But, yeah, um... There's not much to say, but I mean, there was a bunch of other people cast uh, for it, but we still don't know exactly uh, who's the villain. Uh, people thinking that it is, um, what's it called, Norman Osborn and all this other stuff, but or like the Vulture, but nothing's confirmed yet by Marvel, I believe. So uh, The other piece of news for the Homecoming is that we got... Um, some side photos of the costume yeah. and uh, Tom Holland in the costume and the costume doesn't look that much different from what we saw in Civil War. There's just some um, black outlines on the blue part of the, of the pants which is fine, you know, it's nothing like changing, mind you. I'm pretty sure there's someone out there complaining about it, <laughs> but I still think the costume looks good. Uh, you know, Tom Holland in it looks nice and yeah, uh, I just... I just can't wait for this movie because it looks like to be probably the best Spider-Man film yet. Just by looking at the pictures, the cast that they've casted so far and everything. So, yeah, I just can't wait for that release date to come around May 4th, I believe, or something like that. I think it's May so. something. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, just want just to see that movie and then just talk about it on the podcast. I, I do have a lot of faith in it, so. 
yeah, I do have a lot of faith within Marvel and Sony handling this particular uh, Spider-Man film because Marvel is actually working directly with Sony with it and everything like that. And, and, and I believe Marvel has most of the creative freedom with it as well. So that should be that should be good for the film and everything. So Yeah, and, you know, hopefully we could just, you know, live with this Spider-Man forever and not, like, have to, like, freaking move on from, like, three different Spider-Mans before. Like, freaking... Yeah. Uh, last piece of news is that the Bioshock collection has been announced. It includes Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite, and will include all of the single-player DLC from all of the games, and that'll be released on Xbox One and PS4. So, I think that's pretty good, you know, um, especially since... Um, yeah, that is really good, actually. Especially since I know a lot of people want to go and play Bioshock, you know, I hear that some people haven't even played one Bioshock game, and, you know, Infinite is considered to, do, to be a great game. You know, some people may disagree on that, but, you know, um, I may pick it up, I'm not sure, because it does come with all of the DLC, but I'll, I'll think about it, you know, because, like, buying a collection like this with three games, I believe it's still $60 as well, so... I'm just gonna you know. just buy it on Steam, all for cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can also just buy it on Steam when the Steam sale happens. I mean, it's still going on right now, so... I don't know, but I'm not exactly that interested in Bioshock right now, so... I'll just... I'll just wait. Uh, I, I really do need to play Bioshock. It is one of those game series I just need to just play. Yeah. And uh, uh, I guess that's all for news. So um, yeah, that's literally everything for news. So we're gonna talk about games we've been playing. So uh, I'm gonna start with you because I uh, actually don't know what you've been playing. Uh, you know, let's start really. with let's start with both of us. Uh, let's talk about Kirby, right? You, you're playing Kirby. Yeah, man, Kirby playing at Robobot. Okay, so I haven't gotten that far. I only finished the first like you know world, so I, I'm not that far into it. But I, it's really fun. I really do like it a lot. Yeah, I think it's a lot better than Triple Deluxe oh, yeah. because of the the mechs. Yeah, the everything. gimmick is way better. The whole mech thing is like really fun. Yeah, it's so much more fun because, like, I thought it was just, like, the regular mech, but you could actually copy abilities with the mech, which is really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you'll definitely enjoy this Kirby game over Triple Deluxe just because of the mechs, and I think it's just an overall better game <laughs> because of it. Yeah, I, I do like the uh, mech powers and stuff, um, like how each ability changes to uh, to suit the mech. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't. Besides that, I've been playing a lot of the games that I bought on the Steam sale, uh, like Legend of Korra. That game was pretty good. Um, I know that game got a lot of uh, laugh, laugh when it came out. Yeah, you know, average reviews. That a lot of people are saying it. it wasn't that great. But, I, I thought it was. Know. I thought it was fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I haven't played it myself, so I really don't know. But it's like I could. I, I could see the problems with it, like it being repetitive or um, the control. The, not the controls. The uh, camera being pretty bad, but. Um, Besides that, I thought it was a pretty fun game. Like, I, I think I got it for, like, $7 because of the Steam sale. It's not long at all. It's, like, what, like, four hours? is like, really short. I, I beat it two times. Uh, one on uh, normal mode and one on extreme mode. And, yeah, it's um, not that bad. Yeah, it, it's not bad at all. I, I didn't really like it. You know, bending is really fun. And, uh, yeah, the story wasn't that great. It kind of, like, derailed. Yeah, that's, the like, the main uh, point that a lot of people I, hit at. It's like, yeah, you know, the story was, like, nah. I, I thought it was going to go a different it's route. It's supposed to tie into book one and book two, right? Or yeah. Something like that? Yeah, no, it was uh, between book two and three. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, I thought it was going to focus on one element of the stories, I'm not going to say it, but, um, but it didn't. It kind of just went to its own thing. So I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, besides right. that, I've been playing Doom also. Uh, I'm about halfway done, I think. I'm up to, like, uh, mission eight, and there's only, like, like 13 missions, I think. Oh, okay. This is more than halfway, I think. But, um... It's really fun. I really do like Doom. Um, it's very Metroidvania uh, e. Like, there's a lot of upgrades you can find along the way. It's not straightforward at all. It's like you could just go straight to the objective and finish the mission, probably less than ten minutes. But you're gonna be missing on so many different upgrades, like health upgrades, uh, weapon upgrades, and mods and stuff. Uh, and it's really fun. I, I do like that because I really do like exploring, and uh, I really do like those Metroidvania games a lot. So, yeah, it was a lot more in-depth than I thought it was going to be, and it, it totally was worth it. Like, if if you're thinking about getting Doom just for the single player, I think it's worth $40, like it is on, oh, the, okay. on the summer sale. Right? You see, like, I was thinking about buying Doom at launch, and I was like, eh, I'll hold off. You know, I hear a lot of great things about it, but I was like, eh, you know, I, you know, I was still very iffy on it because I'm, I'm not a huge Doom fan, and, you know, this was, like, the new game that they launched, and I was like, eh, you know. Not exactly sure just yet, so I'll probably pick it up uh, maybe sometime soon. I'm still thinking about it. 
Uh, yeah, but you, yeah, you should totally be there. Maybe like um, I don't know. Maybe during the winter sale or next summer sale, probably gonna be like way cheaper, and I'll probably yeah, probably the next summer sale it'll probably be like twenty or something. Yeah, and I would say that's definitely worth it. That game is kick ass, and I love it. Um, what else have I been playing? I also been playing uh, Transformers Devastation, another platinum game. Uh, really fun game also. Uh, pretty short also. I think I'm also like halfway done with that game. Uh, basically, it's just very cheesy 80s Transformer stuff. Uh, <laughs> very fun combat. Um, it has basically which time. Like, you know, you dodge at the right time, you freeze time. I don't know why, in the context of this game, I don't know why it does that, but whatever. It's still really fun. Um, it has some really pointless RPG mechanics, though. Like, you could up stats and stuff, but it doesn't really matter at all. Um, and you could, like, get different weapons, but again, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, another straightforward, you know, fun platinum game that's pretty worth it. It was only like seven dollars as well on uh, the Steam Summer Sale. And oh, um okay. I think uh I also been playing Final Fantasy fourteen again, which is an MMO and it's fun and I'm not gonna really talk about it. So <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. That, I think that's all I've been playing actually. Uh, what have I been playing? Uh it's mainly League of Legends. Uh annoying as always, you know. Trying to work with four other people is always difficult but yeah, I've been taking a break since this morning, I believe, because i got to go and get this video done. But, uh, anything else? I mean, I've been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. again. It's getting really weird. I haven't watched it in, like, a week or so. But, yeah, it's getting kind of crazy. So, uh, I've been reading the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. I've gotten up to Volume 10. And I'm really liking it. It does... It definitely does show who who Peter Parker is and who Spider-Man is, and you know the struggles he does go through being very young and not exactly knowing what his powers can do and what he can do to benefit others. Obviously, he knows great power comes great responsibility, but there's a point in the comics where he's like, "I don't want these powers anymore," basically, and I'm like, "Really? You know, like that's kind of selfish." But you know, he does learn that you know what I can help people, and this power I have is a gift, basically. So. Uh, anything else I've been doing other than playing League and watching other stuff? Uh, no, I really don't think so, but, you know, I haven't been doing much. I've been doing the same old, same old thing since I finished school, so, yeah. <laughs> Good job, very, very thrilling. I mean, like, I don't think there's anything else I've been doing, to be honest. Uh, oh no, I, I've been doing my Summer Backlog Challenge. I played Lego Marvel Super Heroes. It, d it does take a lot of the Marvel, obviously, superheroes and tries to mesh them all together into this one story where it's like these cosmic cubes are being stolen by all the villains or something like that and, you know, the superheroes have to stop them. And, you know, seeing, like, all of the Marvel heroes in, like, um, Lego form is, you know, funny and they all do make jokes about them being Legos and all this other stuff, but, you know, I haven't finished it just yet, but I am enjoying myself. I got past to where I was, I believe, two years ago. You know, I haven't played the games in two years, so I'm glad that I finally went past the point that I was from my previous playthrough. So hopefully I can finish it when summer ends or when school starts, basically. But, yeah, other than that, I don't think I've been doing anything else. It's been same old, same old. Um, so I, I guess that's it for games we've been playing, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. So, I guess we could go ahead and get into your host topic. Yes. So, um, with the failure of my number nine, and uh, many other games that are in Kickstarter right now, like uh, Ukulele and Bloodstain, um, uh, you know, a lot of people have been regretting, like, their their um, donations to those. And I wanted to ask a question, like, I know you backed my number nine, right? Uh, I actually didn't because it was already funded by the time oh, I wanted okay. to. So, but would you <laughs> back a game knowing the failure of my number nine? Like, would you ever back a game? Depending on what game it is, you know. If we're talking about like Sly Five, hell yeah, I'm backing like, that. You see, I was about to back, you know, Psychonauts too, right? Because I, I, I love. I mean, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I, but that's Double Fine. Double Fine has a reputation yeah. for having that, Kickstarter games and then asking for more money later. That's exactly that's why I didn't, I didn't do it. Um, even though I love Psychonauts, I, I, I just wasn't gonna do it because yeah, just, like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't support that kind of stuff because it's like, I forget which game they did, but it was like a point and click game. Uh, uh, what you call it? Oh, freaking Broken Age. Yeah, Broken Age. They did Broken Age, and then it made its goal. And then they got halfway through the game and was like, we need more money. I was like, wait, but you had more than enough money to work with. What the hell happened? So, yeah, Double Fine definitely messed up there. 
and I'm doing Psychonauts 2, I was like, yeah, you know, that's pretty cool. And then they were doing it through this new, like, sort of Kickstarter website. And I was like, oh, no, not again. Yeah. Please, no. But I'm pretty sure it, I'm pretty sure it got funded. And, you know, they're hey, probably already working on it. Obviously, you know, it's freaking double fine. But, you know, if it was, like, Sly 5 or, like, a game that I really, really wanted... I'll definitely back it because, you know, I'm pretty sure other people won't back a Sly Cooper 5, you know. So, but if it's something like, you know, a Mega Man successor like Mighty Number no. 9, I'm pretty sure that's going to get funded within a matter of hours, which is what happened. And, you know, people just adding more money on top of it, I think, was kind of crazy because I'm pretty sure they just wanted to go and see the money go up or they actually just really wanted the game early or, like, be part of the beta or whatever it may have been. But, you know, the end product did not uh, turn out being what it was supposed to be, you know. And that's really disappointing. And obviously, KG Inafune is now screwed because if he does ever, ever want to make another game, he's going to have to do it through, like, a publisher or something because he can't do it through Kickstarter now because no one will fund that yeah, unless he, you're crazy. He would, like, <laughs> never be able to Kickstart anything ever again. And I also think that, like, you know, most of these Kickstarter games are appealing to uh, nostalgia. Like, oh, here's yeah, a Mega like Man. Yeah, like Ukulele. Yeah, Ukulele is Banjo-Kazooie, Bloodstained is uh, Castlevania, and, um, um, Me you know, Mega Man 9 was obviously Mega Man. So I think that also, like, nudges people, like, oh, I gotta fund this and you have my childhood again. But, you know, there's still a chance that they would never rekindle that same memories and, you know, feelings you had when you played those games as a kid. Or something, you know. It could, I mean, it, like, like it's a new game of their yeah, old, it's it's a new you know, game. childhood. So even if let, let's say my number nine was a good game, uh, a lot of people might still be disappointed because oh, it's not Mega Man, you know, you know, because like I paid for Mega Man, but you really didn't. You're, you know, you have, you're backing a different IP, but you know, yeah. it's just saying that it's you know a spiritual success, a successor to Mega Man. But I don't know. Uh, I I I personally probably won't back Kickstarters. I mean, I never had, but like. I was on the brink to uh, to back my number nine and like uh, Psychonauts two and stuff, but I never did because I always like okay it could bite me in the ass so I'm just not gonna do it. I would gladly pay for the game afterward, you know, like, I'll, I'll buy it. Yeah, I was I was definitely gonna pay for my new number nine afterwards, but once the reviews came out and the GameStop canceled my order, thankfully, you know, I was like, all right, whatever, you know. Yeah, I cause I can't. I'm putting money into his pocket now. I can only really think of um. Like one good Kickstarter game, right? Isn't it like Shovel Knight? Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, Shovel Knight was back through Kickstarter, and then on top of that, they went through a bunch of YouTubers who went promote their game, which helped them a lot as well. Uh, was there any other? Um, there was another game. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it was a platformer from like the 80s or something like that. Let me go check my Steam. The Brofors? No, not that. Uh, but uh, alright, I'm gonna just go on. <laughs> I'll just go on my Steam and see what game it was. But yeah, it was like a platformer game, and you know, it got back through Kickstarter. It, it like barely made it too, but they managed to you know use all that money, the money that you know they had to make to make the game, which was good. Unlike Mighty Number no. Nine, who had more than enough money. I guess Undertale just, also was actually yeah Undertale, yeah Undertale was really good as well. I mean, I, I haven't started playing it. I need to start playing it maybe one of these days, but you know, it's. It's like very. It's very I mean, iffy. it's very fifty. Yeah, 50. it's very iffy when yeah, it comes yeah. to Kickstarter games because I've also seen some game developers straight up run off with the money. Oh yeah, there was this one dude um, with uh, I don't know what it was. It was some like I don't know, like some insect game or some uh, or or something like I don't know what it was. But like his friends took all that money and just used it on like freaking alcohol and shit. And I'm like, oh no, they basically ran off with the money for the game. And then the guy is like, oh sorry guys, there's no game anymore because they blew all the Kickstarter money. So that that was bad. So like you should, yeah. yeah, you have to know like I guess the developers like you know just like see see what's like it's very like gray like <laughs> it's just hard. I mean, you're basically gambling your money to hopefully get a product that'll end up good. Right? Yeah, it's it's just like very like yeah, be super careful. Like, yeah, make sure that these... Like, for the ukulele, I'm sure that game is going to be good. Because they built, like, that base part of the game in, like, what? Like, three months, they said, or something? Or, like, a few weeks or something. And they showed us what what it was. I'm like, yeah, that looks good. And they stuck with that, <laughs> that, that like, base game. It didn't change at all, and it still looks good. So I have faith in uh, ukulele, like, a lot of it. Uh, I don't know too much about Bloodstain, but I heard uh, good things uh, about it, so... I I only know ukulele, but I'm pretty sure that game's gonna turn out being fantastic. Yeah. Because it's it's old rare developers going back to what they were doing best, platformers. Yeah. So 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good. I'm not exactly sure how well it'll be reviewed because platformers like those aren't exactly, you know, the thing nowadays. Well, collectathons and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, we'll see. There'd be a market for it because there always is. But yeah, nostalgia and all this other stuff. Um, all right. So what game was it? I'm on my Steam page right now. Forget where. What was it? Just looking. Do, 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 do. <sighs> Shit. Oh. Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams. That was a right. Kickstarter game. It was a it was originally a I believe a Mario clone, but they put the Gianna Sisters in there. And then like they got sued and all this other stuff. And then eventually I think they made like their own game or something like that. And now they wanted to go and make a newer one with like better graphics and all this other stuff, and they made it. And I'm glad that they did. You know, uh, uh, I did fund that one, and it actually did come to fruition, thankfully. So yeah, that's like my only Kickstarter game, like ever. And you know, I haven't back to Kickstarter since because that one was a bit risky. If I'm, I'm not even gonna lie because they barely made it, and on top of that, it was you know a new game and all this other stuff. So. Will I ever back a Kickstarter um, from here on out after Mighty Number no. Nine, like post Mighty Number no. Nine? Depending on the game, like it really does depend on the game. Like if I really, really want to go and see that game come to fruition, yes, I will back it. But that's like very, very rare. Yeah. Um, what I mean by that, it has to be Sly Five. Like basically, like well, like that's that's the only thing I would ever back on Kickstarter. If it's like we want to make a Sly Cooper game, but we need money. But that wouldn't really make sense because they have to go through Sony to do that. But yeah, that's like the only way I would ever back a Kickstarter. Yeah, I mean, right. I'll, I'll probably. It depends on the developer. Like the only thing we knew about my number nine is like Inafune was in it. Yeah, KG Inafune. You know, he seemed like the you know the good old guy back then, and now he's like a scumbag running off with money. Uh, yeah, he didn't. Uh, you know, he didn't really do much. He was kind of just there. Uh, I'm yeah. probably gonna be paying attention to like like for ukuleles. Oh, oh, we're ex like rare developers. I'm like, oh, okay, you probably know what you're doing. So if if I had a chance, I probably would have fund that. But not if I went so quickly. I'm like, okay, you don't need my help. <laughs> so yeah, like it was at the point where they funded it like less than 24 hours, and I was like, well, you know, they don't need any more money. But people kept backing it and backing it and backing it. And I was like, guys, stop. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, now people are going to wonder, did they actually use all that money for that game? Or did Inafune just, like, hide some of that into, like, his bank account or something? Uh, he probably used it we may never it. know. <laughs> but he, prob he probably hid some of that money or tossed that money somewhere. We'll, we'll never know until he decides to tell us. But, you know, whatever. Uh, this was a very short podcast episode because uh, I played no games basically, and there was no news. Yeah, I mean that's just post E3. Yeah. Yeah, it's like nothing to talk about really. Because yeah, everyone we, blew that load on E3, so there's <laughs> nothing else to do. Basically. Yeah. So, uh, hopefully, two weeks from now, there's more news to cover, but we'll see then but yeah that is the end of the two players podcast episode 11 thank you guys for listening once again and we will see you guys two weeks from now with the next episode later